Good morning, English 149. This is Grant. Um, happy Wednesday morning. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the, the last couple classes of uh, watching um, Black Panther and watching uh, Watchmen. Um, I tried to kind of give you a break because it's the summer, but also I wanted you to think about um, these lines between what is fan fiction, what is adaptation, right? We talked about these things as theoretical concepts in the first couple weeks, um, but now we have a couple texts on the table to look at. And, you know, what I kind of want you to think about, especially this is why this um, lecture is titled The Medium is the Message, is the format of what I showed you, right? These are both um, comic book movies, and they definitely, you know, are embedded within fan culture because the fan culture around comics and superhero movies um, is quite large, but also the forms in which these things take. Um, so I'm going to introduce you to a term called heteroglossia, um, which I'm going to kind of relate to the way in which um, visual medium is able to kind of achieve something that it, what I see in a lot of written fan fiction doesn't achieve. Um, and I think that has something to do with how fan fiction is perceived as opposed to adaptation. So um, the term hetero, heteroglossia comes from a Russian scholar named uh, Mikhail Bakhtin. And Bakhtin um, kind of came onto the scene uh, in the 80s. Um, a lot of his work was translated into English. Uh, and um, he um, was a scholar that was really interested in how um, the novel was a different how the novel kind of created this new narrative and this new form out of previous forms like epic poetry. Um, and so what he found in novels is novels often have what he's calling heteroglossia. And in heteroglossia in Russian um, translates the way he uses it to varied speechness. Um, and this is, you know, the fact that you have many different voices and many different perspectives in a narrative, right? Um, the point I have here is there's a coexistence of and conflict between different types of speech, right? You have the speech of characters, you have the speech of narrators, and even sometimes there's the speech of the author. Um, and this is a way to express authorial intentions, but in a refracted way, right? We've, we've been kind of talking about death of the author and um, authorial intention, and this is a way to hide it. I think, you know, in a lot of our podcasts so far, we've been talking about how fan fiction makes explicit uh, intention, it makes explicit the uh, author's presence. And what heteroglossia does is it um, refracts it. It, it. it creates all of these different layers in order to hide your intentions. And this is where he thought novels uh, work differently than other forms of media. And this is where I'm going to say, like, this is the uh, one of the differences between adaptation and fan fiction is uh, adaptation usually uses this varied speechness where fan fiction oftentimes has a singular perspective um, so you know thinking about uh, black panther um, you know you have um, you know many different perspectives right it's not just um, from T'Challa's perspective, um, you have different characters in the novel, right? And, you know, this is really explicit, but you literally have different characters talking, right? And you can see that, you know, there is a certain perspective and you can layer visuals. So you can literally layer 
um, voices on top of one another, um, against one another, right? So there's, you know, something being said by the composition. Um, there's something being said by uh, different people. Um, you know, you can see a title. Um, so there's different ways in which speech is being encoded in these comics, right? Um, so where it's really difficult um, to locate, like, where is Coates in this narrative? Um, and it's the same way in the movie, right? In the movie, we have so many characters um, that have their scenes, right? T'Challa is not in every scene. Um, and he isn't the most compelling character, and he isn't the one that's doing all the action, and he's not the one that's doing all the telling, right? So, you know, think about camera angle too, right? Camera angle isn't done through every, everyone's perspective, right? Sometimes it's done through the character's eyes. Sometimes it's done through another character's eyes. Sometimes you see a different scene, in which none of your main characters are a part of, right? So these are the ways that Heroglossia gets encoded. And this is a way also for us to kind of hide intention, okay? The other thing I wanted you to think about if you, if you um, didn't see our Black Panther um, discussion is I want you to think about, you know, Coates is um, trying to rewrite Black Panther. Um, and a lot of what we see in A Nation Under Our Feet is translated into the movie. Uh, but the movie is kind of the Black Panther. So what do we do with the 40 years of history? Coates, it's really unclear whether or not he asked Marvel if he could write it or Marvel asked him. Um, but he definitely read comics and was interested in them. And he isn't a comic book writer as his main, uh, you know, profession. And so, you know, this is an amateur thing for him. Obviously, he does an amazing job. But, you know, is it there is a kind of fan fiction built into it. But he's able to really hide his own voice and his intentions, right? He does a really good job at this. Um, you know, again, Watchmen has a, a lot of different characters and um, a different perspectives, right? Um, by the way, I, I just want to um, talk about Hooded Justice, who you see um, in the third, uh, the first and the third um, cell here. Um, you know. A spoiler alert is, um, you know, that character um, in this original comic and movie is thought of as white, and he's re re rewritten as black in the um, TV series, and it's kind of obvious if you look at him. But again, this is really easy to see. Many voices involved, many different perspectives, right? Up close, far away, we get... Um, you know, really from characters' perspectives, and then we get a more uh, detached view, right? And then, you know, in the TV series, we have this um, bumping up against history, right? The series begins with the, the very real and very ugly Tulsa uh, riots in 1921. Um, which, you know, it's described as a riot. It's really, as you see it in the um, TV series, it's, it's more of a genocide of Black Wall Street. But, you know, again, there is a voice of history that's bumping up against the voice of fiction. Okay. And bumping these two things up, right? You have this you know, 1921, and then you have this kind of uh, different imagined future. And those historical per perspectives are, again, different voiced, right? We know there's a certain legitimacy with history, and then we're looking at this. 
and especially to contemporary culture, right? Even though this is a, a different future than what we have, um, it's saying something about culture. And the author can say something by using all of those different perspectives, all of those different types of narratives, okay? So this is how they hide their intention, where, um, you know, the visual form and the kind of ability to get all of these voices in um, is a way to think about uh, different perspectives, right? So visual medium is an easy way to get a, away with this. And so this is where I want to bring it back to where we talked about before with the medium is the message, right? Um, we shape our tools and then our tools shape us. So we consume a ton of visual media, right? Probably more than books. And that might be true for most of you. Some of you maybe not. Um, but that's going to influence the way that we think of narrative, right? So if there's a lot of writers in these movies and TV shows, right? There's a lot of voices and we see those voices. We're kind of used to this hiding of authorial intention where when we go and we look at fan fiction, so you're gonna read um, this chapter from Isolated you're going to feel the author's perspective. You're going to feel a very um, singular voice, even though there might be different characters. And this is where, uh, you know, when we're talking about good fan fiction and bad fan fiction, um, you know, the reason why you're having problems thinking of the difference between adaptation and fan fiction is... At the heart of it, everyone's kind of borrowing stories and writing our own with existing things. The problem is this type of writing leaves your presence as the writer, as the narrator, bare. And so that's why I want you to think about is not only does the medium of visual affect it, um, but also the way in which it's written. So many voices, different mediums are ways in which we can um, hide our intentions and make it seem like it's adaptation and not fan fiction.